at this place in history, we're in Waterford and with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. Steve, what brings us here today? So Amanda, we are standing right outside Northeastern Speedway, one of the early tracks here in Vermont, and we're really getting excited about our exhibit at the Vermont Historical Society, Anything for Speed Auto Racing in Vermont. And so Paul Belfoy, the owner of this track, uh, is meeting us here, and I think we're even going to get to drive on the track. Paul, when was this track created? It was created in the uh, spring of 1959 by a group of individuals that worked at the Ralston Arena plant in St. Johnsbury. What the individuals wanted was a safe place to race. They were racing in fields before that, and so they came here, uh, built a safe track, and uh, spectators were safe, and uh, they had a great time here. What types of cars raced here at this track? Coupes from the 30s with flathead engines, V8s, and six cylinders. And then in 64, they went to a semi-late model car, like a full body car, like a 55 Chevy Ford mm -hmm. car. So they had two divisions. Is there something that made this track stand out from the rest then as others started to pop up? After this track was built, other tracks were built in Vermont. And it took away some of the splendor of this track because the other tracks were a little bigger in size and uh, more payouts. Thunder Road started in 1960, the year after this was built, and they raced on Thursday nights and they had larger payouts. So when people wanted to go to Thunder Road, they didn't want to wreck their car here on Saturday night and then not be able to race there on Thursday. So how long then was racing really popular here before that decline started to happen? The decline here started probably in 1964 and in 66 it closed. Before that decline, what would it have looked like here on a Saturday night then? Kind of set the scene for us. Well, we had bleachers all along the back of the wall there and it was a dollar to get in. The kids were 25 cents. We had restrooms and concession stands up there. And in the pits over here, we had the first aid station and concession stands for the drivers. We're standing on the track now, and you've put your heart and soul into this. Can you just tell us a little bit about, about your story? I bought the property in 2008, not knowing the history of the track at all. People kept coming up to me and saying, my father raced there, my uncle raced there. We used to go to the races there all the time. There was a lot of history, so I said, I'm going to see if I can find out more about this. So I went to the library, read Old Caledonian Records, and it was all, um, they had all the articles in there and all the advertisements, and I learned so much about it. I found out it, the first race was July 18, 1959. So I worked every day, day off I had, came here with some help, and we cleared all the trees and, and the brush and, and cleaned it all up. And then on uh, July 18th, 2009, to the day, we had a reunion here and people came and it was a great day. And what's happened since then here? Since then we've had a few reunions here in July, uh, basically right around the day it was uh, started. And uh, this year we're going to have an event here July 14th. And the old coops come and uh, people rekindle friendships and it's a great day. Rolling out of turn four at this place in history.